Well, it's that time of the week. You know what time it is. It's time to call on Robin Cross, and he is with Stonex. He's uh, located in Chicago. Robin has all the information related to our lumber market and the lumber industry. And Robin, with all the turmoil going on in the financial markets, I can't help but wonder what that means to the housing market and the demand for lumber. What happened this week? Good morning, Marlon. Thank you for having me. Well, let's do some prices, then, and we'll get in the thick of it. So currently, May lumber is trading four twenty one ninety. That's up seven thirty with fifty seven trades. And we got to talk about minis, considering this is our last legacy big contract left ever. You know, we we go off permanently uh, on May fifteenth. So let's start. You know, we'll get into this minis more. That's trading at five nineteen, up four fifty. The why there's such a big price discrepancy? Obviously, it's a hundred dollars difference from a truck contract to a rail car contract is simply because they bake the shipping into delivered Chicago into that price. So it's always going to carry about a hundred dollar premium. Um, you know, just to kind of explain that because guys are like, man, why wouldn't I be selling the little one? You're picking up an extra hundred bucks, but that's because of shipping. So, um, yesterday we had March lumber expire. So that's why, uh, we're not quoting that this morning. That went off at three forty seven fifty. So I just want to kind of recap the last couple expirations so guys could see the big picture on prices. So like I said, March finished at 347.50, Jan expired at 344 even, so only a $3.50 gain with you know, a potential billion feet coming off the market. If you remember the last couple of weeks, you know, we went up for nine days in a row, excuse me, 11 days in a row, get all the way up to 530. Then we went down 18 of 22 days to put in the lows in the low 340s. And then we literally have been sideways for the last 10 straight trading days in the $20 range. But you know what? I don't think that is a bad thing. You know, I always think that's healthy when the market is range bound. You know, it gives opportunity on both sides. Um, you know, so we left a $66 gap from March expiration to uh, May's beginning. And why I bring that up, because it's significant, because that is your downside target. You know, from the January to March expiration, we left, I believe it was like, just let me check a look at my notes. I think it was about, I call it like a $50 gap, right? Well, we left that gap on January 16th. We come all the way back March 13th to finally fill it. So, you know, when you have upside ambitions, you got to always remember that in the back of your mind. We will one day fill it. There's only been a couple instances in history where we left, we abandoned the gap, and they're pretty much at the all-time low. And there's a couple uh, when we were, when you and I were on the air doing all those crazy prices at the all-time high, right? So, uh, Random Lake Cash Print came out uh, this week, 355 down two. So the board's a good, solid 60, you know, almost $70 premium. And and actually, news on the streets, I had guys uh, tell me that they bought much cheaper than that, and I have no reason to discount that. You know, cash was pretty heavy um, these past couple weeks. So you still got to be on the lookout for, you know, further curtailments. I think that the mills are really hard pressed to run if the prices, you know, sustain under, um, you know, 400 bucks, well under the cost of production. So you got to keep an eye on that. And then also, Marlon, we had some breaking news today. Housing starts and permits came out. So first we'll start with the consensus. And, you know, as my kid would always say, this is sus. It's completely suspect. The consensus was that it was uh, to be basically unchanged, uh, up 0.01%. Well, housing starts came out a whopping up 9.8% at 1.1150 million. Uh, building permits came out, which is our gauge of future business, up 13.8% at 1.524 million. But if you read the report that the government puts out, it literally says that there's a 14% possible margin of error both up and down so that's why i say it's completely suspect <laughs> so definitely that's not a that's not something to trade off of marlin that's literally something to give you and i something to talk about on the yeah. air um i do believe this is our one and only chance to kind of turn housing around is this spring but the like you said like you opened up in your segue these interest rates are really you know weighing on the market think about it all these guys have you know three percent mortgage homes out there. Why are we going to buy a new home and double that interest rate? So I think we need to see some more shake out on that before um, guys get, you know, get all excited about housing. But, you know, for May, near term, there's a lot of cash on the market. Long term, with the shutdowns, I would still maintain more of a bullish posture, but it's hard to pay up when you're already at a $60 premium. You know what I mean? So Good just point. be cautious. Good point. Well, Robin, excellent information, and uh, thanks for pointing that out.
And uh, we'll have to start uh, watching these other contracts now, too, moving forward, that's for sure. Uh, I appreciate the update and take care of this week. Robin Cross of StoneX with us from Chicago. I'll be right back and I'll take a look at our latest livestock trade coming up.